Thank you. And we want to invite you back. Amen. About a year from now, any time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. My, that certainly makes me feel welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And sometimes ministries, you know, when we put all the efforts that we can write in anything, then see it's appreciated by the people. My, that just makes you feel so good. I certainly appreciate you. I'll always be praying for you. And if the Lord willing, I will be back again. And I would like to come back and see you. Thank you. Thank you. If he tarries, and it's his will, we'll be back to see you again. This is my, I believe, about my third trip here, anyhow. And so we hope to come back. When we can stay maybe a little longer, get the grounds and so forth. It's been a, a great pleasure. One of the finest meetings that we've had in a long, long time. Such fine fellowship, cooperation, love. That's the thing that melts the hearts of the people together, Amen. is the love of God. Yeah. And all that I know, and I would, if I had all of God's gifts in a great big place that I could go in and receive any gift that I wish, I would accept love above any of them. I'd rather have love in all the gifts Amen. that God has. Because where there's tongues, they shall cease. Where there's prophecy, it shall fail. But when it's love, it endures forever. And I... The love. I just um, think that's the most grandest word, love. It's broke down in two different words. It's a, a love. It's called filial love. That's the love that we have one for another natural. And then there's agapo love, which comes from God. That's a godly respects and love. And I'm so glad to be here in this fellowship this afternoon where both phases of love is operating Fellowship one with another and the love of God shed abroad in our hearts for the Holy Ghost. I want to thank that little choir. And Brother Borders just came over and said to me, he said, Brother Branham, that's not no selected choir. That's just people of the campaign, just different ones. You should get one another's name and form a choir. That's really good. And I certainly like your message to you. Uh, to been born again. I'm glad to fellowship with you that I've been born again too. Amen. By the same spirit and in the same family. And you're my brother and sister by that. That's the only place that fellowship ever can be is under the blood of Jesus Christ. God makes a decision. It must forever be that way. And God's first decision to bring man into fellowship with himself was under the blood from the Garden of Eden till this very minute. That's the only place that the Old Testament, only one place that is under the blood. Job, how flatly he stood on that, knowing when they called him a secret sinner, yet he knew he was under the shed blood and everything had to be all right. So we're happy for that today. Amen. I just don't know how to express my thanks for these fine brethren here. You, brethren, how nice you been. I've never had a nicer sponsorship in my life. You know, just been tops and everything. I'm trusting that God will send a revival for each of your churches. And just, just you'll have to build bigger churches and stretch out and pull up your tents and stretch farther and put this soul out of them. And make a revival for us in the until we see Jesus face to face. There hasn't been a thing that we have asked for or anything, but what this group of men has just been perfect to help in every way they could. Setting up here on the platform, representing the message, and, you know, each one of us might have a little something here or there that we might disagree with one another. There's never one word said. Just whatever it is, we take it and move right on. Now, that's what you call fellowship. That's right. Real fellowship. God bless you, my brother. Amen. The night never gets too dark or the rain falls too hard, but why I do anything for you, I could pray for you all the time. Hallelujah. You pray for me. Amen. If you hit some mission fields and some rough places, I'll be depending. I've got a group of brethren that are praying for you. Amen. I hope to be back with you again.
soon sometime or we can stay longer and just have a time where we won't have to hurry in and Amen. jump out and jump in like that. That makes everybody nervous. And the people is being prayed for. It makes them nervous. Just about time they begin to try to halfway understand what you're driving at, then you got to go. See? And they don't get it. But let me say this to you. If I have found grace in your sight, there'll be many, many people that come here that was sick. Will not maybe know it at this time. But you watch is find out in your church's names, brethren. There's been a, so many things that happened here that I couldn't even call them just out over the audience like that. Just as fast as it could happen. And I just couldn't do it. And I thought, well, as long as two, three, or four, five, six, whatever it was, spoke to, the rest would understand. There's been a fine faith out there and a faith here. Everywhere. It's been a fine faith. I appreciate it. And to, I've got some of my brethren here that I have never seen yet in the meeting. I've seen him over to the church of the synagogue the other day. Brother Fred South, South Southman, one of our trustees in the church. Brother Fred, are you here? Stand up if you are. Brother Fred Southman, way back towards the back. Yeah. Uh, he and his wife and family. And I understand that Brother Tom Simpson is here also, a Canadian friend, sojourning with us in Jeffersonville. Where are you, Brother Tom and his family? Brother Tom, you also back. Now, from here out, it's kind of hard. The light's shining against that over there. I can't see. Brother Bank Wood, a fine brother that was a Jehovah Witness. And he come to one of the meetings and he saw um, uh, how the Lord was dealing a woman or a young lady that had this year um, sterning to stone. And her legs and her arms... She couldn't move them. It was just flat. We prayed for her. The Holy Spirit come up on one night and pronounced it and then told her, Thus saith the Lord, you're going to be all right. And the next morning, she'd run up and down three or four flights of steps and come into the building, praising God the next day. Now, that astonished him. So he had a boy, David, a young fellow, had polio, a leg drawn up under him. I went up from that meeting to Sweden, Switzerland, or Sweden, I believe it was, and Norway. And then when I come back, I had a meeting up at uh, an upper Ohio there. I forget the name of the place for the Great Lakes. And one night, while I was speaking, and large crowds of people, and I seen a little boy with a yellow jacket on. Had one leg drawn up, limped down as he tried to walk. And the Holy Spirit turned around to bank woods uh, way down from LaGrange, Kentucky, with a, a little boy crippled, and the Lord was going to make him well. He was going to be healed. He didn't have to wait. Right then, that crippled leg straightened out. Brother Woods here today somewhere. I haven't seen him since, but I know he's here. He's a book salesman. His son, that boy with a crippled leg, he hardly had to send study sometimes which leg it was. He's married and got two fine children. He and his wife is with us today. David, are you in somewhere in the building? Would you stand up? If I could see, I, is it David? Yes, there he is. There is a witness to the power of God. David Wood, crippled boy, a polio, and now a living just as normally and his legs just as perfect as it can be. The grace of God. Praise. Brother Wood, Brother Banks, Woods and Sister Wood, there. You know what they've done? He's a contractor and a good one too, builder. He's come up out of a school of contractors and builders. But when he did that, he was converted. I baptized him. He received the Holy Ghost. And then, of course, his people being Jehovah Witness, immediately they was going to excommunicate him right now. So his brother came down to talk to him and they want to know where this quack preacher was that he was running and fooling with. And Mr. Woods sold out everything he had, rented his homes, and moved over and lives right next door to me. Ball the place right next door. And I tell you, I'm glad I can say this about Brother Woods this afternoon. He's an Acts 2 Christian, a real man. And uh, his brother come down to talk to him and... They were, his father was a reader in the Jehovah Witness and a good man. 
And I'd never seen any of his people. So his brother come down to talk to him and wonder where that quack preacher was that he's out there mowing grass in the yard. I come in with an old tore up hat on, sat down and talked to him and the Holy Spirit came down and said, you are, um, you're a married man. You've left your wife. You have two little boys. And he looked around to Brother Wood back there as did say, yes, you told him that. I said, I know what she said, but he never told you this. You're running around with a woman and she has got arbon hair. And a couple nights ago, you were standing at the door. Somebody knocked on the door. It's a good thing you didn't go when you looked through the window because a man had shot your head off with a pistol. That done it. <laughs> then I baptized him. He got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Then down come the sister, a lovely woman come down. She wanted to see what it's all about. I baptized her. She got the Holy Ghost. Then the father got all stirred up and he come down. Right? And he was going to come down and straighten me out right because it was all wrong in my doctrine. Brother Wood said, that's just taking fishing. I said, all right. So we started to go down in Kentucky fishing. I was just going to let him do the talking. That's the best way, you know, let them name the, the thing. So... That morning, it rained all night. The next morning, when we crossed the Ohio River, I said, well, now, all the streams of vision came. I said, all the streams are going to be muddy. We will not be able to fish until we get to this place where we're going, about 100 miles. And then it's going to be real pretty and clear, and we're going to fish. The rain just bypassed it so we could fish. And then we're going today, not going to catch anything. And tonight, long towards dark, Mr. Bankswood here is going to catch a small fish, catfish, and I'm going to catch a whole string of them. You're going to use the same bait right beside of me, and I'm going to have a whole string. And then we're going in about 11 o'clock. The next morning we're coming out, I'm going to catch a large fish with scales on it. I can't see just what kind it is, but it's going to be a large fish. There won't be no more caught the rest of the day. I see Mr. Wood, Grandpa Wood, look around like that and say, and you say, oh, yes, we'll see how that comes out. So on the road down, we told and Banks had told him about how the visions and being out. Brother Banks and I lived together, sleep together. we just brothers. And how that he had seen up on the river, and Lyle was with him, how catching a fish one afternoon, I said, something's fixing to happen. There's going to be a resurrection of life. And the next morning, we were catching bluegills to put on fishing lines and Mr. Lyle, Banks' his brother, caught one, swallowed the hook way down. He didn't flip it fast enough and jerked it out of the water and just pulled the entrails and gills out of its throat. Throw it out on the water, said, little fella, you shot your last one. And it wiggled a little bit, lay there and stiffened out little uh, small fish, what you call here a brim, I guess. And it um, floated around on the water for about a half hour and floated back into the, the, the pond lilies and things. And I was standing there fishing over the side of the boat like that. All at once, something comes down through those trees, roaring around. They heard it, but they didn't see it. It was that light circling around over there. It said, stand up, speak to that little fish, and he shall have his life back. I called the attention to the brother, and I said, little fishy, in the name of Jesus Christ, I give you your life. That little fish turned over, swam right out through the river as hard as he could go out there. And that Amen. seems mythical, but here's God's word and God's my judge. Amen. And, um, and so Brother Lyle just fell off over in a boat. He said, that meant for me, Brother Branham, he'd just been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost just a little while. He said, that meant me. He said, that's all there is to it. He said, because I said to that little fish, you shot your last wad. I said, no, it was just his presence. Brother Banks, back there, raised up, said, it's good to be here. <laughs> Let us build three tabernacles. Oh, and that day after, just exactly what was told Grandpa Woods, it happened just exactly the same way, same fish, just exactly the same number. The next day when we left, I said, what do you think, Mr. Woods? He said, well, it's pretty good when a man can see fish before he catches them. So and I said, what about it? Now I led him to Christ, baptized him and his wife, his whole family now is baptized into the Lord and filled with the Holy Ghost and living a victorious life. Hallelujah. Um, what is amazing grace. Brother Woods, are you here? Where are you at, Brother Woods, Sister Woods? Are you in the building? Stand up if you are. Here, I can't see them. Anybody looking back can see me. Oh, yes, right back at the back. All right, Brother Woods, that's fine. Well, let's see. Well, I ain't going to have much more time. Lots more, my friends. Brother Gene Norman.
precious brother. I like to tell some things that happened over there. He moved and went to Tucson. I was with him the other day on a hunting trip. Wish I could have Brother Fred and them testify of the things. While this one, we was on that little three-day hunting trip. More happened towards the kingdom of God than you could take history from the time of Martin Luther down to this time. That's right. Brother Fred said, what a grand thing it is. Brother Norman, are you and Sister Norman in the building? Where are you? I, I wish you'd stand up if you are. There he is. Yes, sir. Uh, you heard that word Eberellus, the Dutchman, you know. you know. How many knows what Eberellus means? Overall. <laughs> Overall. All right. That's right. Well, he's glad to ha- be here with you people. God bless you. I just heard a few minutes ago as I was talking to Billy on the outside, all expenses was made. Thank you all. The Lord bless you. I told the manager always, Mr. Borders here, any time, don't never press people. If the expenses isn't made, I'll send home to my own church or somewhere. We'll get it. See? And uh, we don't want to never press, push, or anything. Then Billy tells me that they took up an offering for me. Thank you. God bless you. I didn't come for that purpose, friends. I come here to try to help you. But if you sharing your living with me, I'll do everything I can by the grace of God to see that it goes to the kingdom of God every way that I can. I trust that God will build you a home on the other side immortally that will never fade and never need a repair. Until we meet over there on that side, remember, I'm always your brother trying to do anything I can for you. Write to me. If I can send you a prayer cloth, something I prayed over, I'd be glad to do it. Now, when it comes to asking questions, it's best that you ask your pastors. I always leave it that way because, you know, it's best to ask the pastors. But if I can help you in any way towards praying for you or doing anything for you, write me. I'm not trying to get your address because I'm, I'm trying to get somebody to help me answer letters. I don't have any programs to support, nothing at all. Those books back there, they don't belong to me. Mr. Woods has bought those books himself from Brother Gordon Lindsay and many of the places. And he just brings them along for the people, just for the people. We don't get one cent out of it. We don't take nothing. Brother Fred Sothman's son-in-law sells the tapes. He's got them so low till he just can make them, that's all. Uh, and so they got tapes or anything we can help you. We're here to do it. Anything that we can do. God bless you. And I solicit your prayers for me wherever I go. And if I never meet you again, now I know if I come back a year from now, there's some, if I live for another year, and Jesus tarries, there's some here this afternoon would not be here then. You're going on. This is our last time meeting. But when I meet you at the other side, where we all rise in this generation, I'll still have the same story by the grace of God. That's right. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost and now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amen. God love you and bless you. And remember, when the winds are blowing hard, and the nights are dark and stormy, and witch doctors on every side and challenge you to it, I'll be remembering it. I got people up on the West Coast praying for me. Amen. Bless the Lord. It's too hot this afternoon for me to preach what I was going to speak on. So uh, Billy told me out there, said, Daddy, you'd be better off. Said, you promised to take up all those prayer cards. Said, you'd be better off if you just walked in there and, and, and thank the people and, and walked out. But I'd feel like a traitor to Christ if I didn't read a scripture and say something. That's right. And we're going to pray for the, for the sick, too. Every prayer card. Now, I just asked if you would just be as reverent as possible. And I'll hurry it right up. It's a strange thing that uh, this meeting come about, how it come to happen, but the Lord brought it to pass. Now, before we approach the Word, let's approach the author of the Word, the Lord Jesus, by the way of prayer. Our gracious Father, we thank Thee for Thy goodness and Thy mercy. Thou art God from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Lord, this little meeting down here with these fine men, your servants, these fine people out there who went down in their pockets to, to 
sponsor this meeting and paid out their living. I pray God that like bread upon the water it will return. I pray for these ministers, their churches, their peoples. God, may their little churches grow until it spreads out and may out of their churches go mighty evangelists and missionaries to all the world. Let us work, Lord, for we know we haven't much more time to work. We see time closing in. Soon we are looking for the angel that will set his foot on the land and on the sea and raise up his hand and swear by him that lives forever and ever. Time shall be no more. He said at that time the mystery of God should be finished. We understand now, Father, that God's threefold mystery has been made known to us. And we understand and we're looking now for those mysterious thunders that came out from heaven in the book of Revelations that was sealed on the back of the book. Reveal to us, O Lord, the things that we need for the battle ahead of us. Forgive our sins, our, our many uh, neglectful things, our iniquity. We pray, God, that this afternoon that you'll do the exceeding abundantly above all that we could do or think. Now, Father, we're not here to be seen. These people are not here to be seen. It's hot. They're sitting with their coats off. The man, the precious sister, is sitting there fanning. They're here because they are hungry. They love you. And Lord, I'm here with a rasped throat from this smog. And, and I, I, I'm here because that I believe that you ordained that we should be here this afternoon. And my heart is wide open. Theirs is wide open. So come in, Lord Jesus. And speak to us the things you would have us to know. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to announce the little text that I want to use. I want to call it Super Sign. And I'll announce my text before I read my scripture. And that's a little unusual. Usually you read your scripture and then get your text. But you know, sometimes God does things in unusual ways, unusual times. In Isaiah... The seventh chapter and the fourteenth verse. I would like to read a portion of scripture, this one verse, to make a context that I have drawn this text from. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. We are living in a day of super. If it isn't super, it doesn't go over. Everything's got to be super. It's a super day. You go at the store, the little corner groceryman's out of business. They got to go to the supermarket. Get some stamps and pay a lot more for them. About a nickel apiece. <laughs> Because it's a supermarket. They can't give you them stamps, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's a supermarket. It's air conditioned. Walk in it, you pay for it. Then there's a supercars. We have to drive down the road. There used to be they could drive when I first come towards the West Coast. I was 16 days in a Model T. But I got here. Now it's about four days in a Ford. But of course, my first Ford and the roads I had, I could only make 30 miles an hour. And that was 15 miles this way and 15 miles this way. <laughs> <laughs> but we got super highways now. Super cars, super highways. And we uh, 
trying to think to the world that they got super people, superman, got on the radio and televisions, superman. They want super race. Hitler said the Germans were super race. Stalling thought Russia was a super race. Khrushchev thinks the same thing. England said, as long as there's a world, there will be an England. Super race. America thinks they're the super race. We got the intelligence and everything. That's all we need. So we are the super race. Super race, super ways, super everything, super. It's got to be great, greater than the ordinary. One man's got to be, he's got to have a super house. They change in every year. 1962 model houses won't be no good in 1963. Your refrigerator's got to be a little super. It's got to step up a little more. Just put a little more armament on it, make you swap the old one in and pay a couple three hundred dollars more and get you another one. That's the way it is. It's all super. It's just a big money-making scheme. I think we were better off with a horse and buggy. That's right. Got to a spot like I was preaching the other day. It's a blowing up time. Everything's blowing up. People are blowing up. Getting too much pressure built up. Why don't you slow down and live? Huh? That's right. What are you in such a hurry about? We got to have super meetings in our church. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> now, that's the modern trend. About fifteen minutes, so don't the deacon board takes you in the back and wants to know what's the matter. So it's everything super. All of this is signs pointing to an oncoming darkness. That's right. Coming to an unknown age. We're going into a mystic, unknown age where supers go to break out into mysticism. They don't know where they're going. Man will drive down the road at 90 miles an hour, take the chance on breaking his neck and somebody else's family to be killed, stop at a beer tavern, drink two hours before he goes home. What's the matter with him? It's all got to hurry up. Too much of a hurry. Be better if we just took our time. Now, man has always tried in himself to do something to make a memorial to himself. We've just had some of that just take place, as we all know. But it's just the idea that man wants to do something for his own achievement. He won't leave things just the way it is. He's got to do something to it. In our country, they had to cut out all the woods. And that lets the storms pass through and tear up everything. Now they dammed up the river. That makes the floods sweep over and wash out the cities. Now they've got so many super bombs and things to fall out, danger signs everywhere. Russia's turned it loose over there. In a few years down, the sea is going to be boiling up and, and we'll all be killed with fallout, they say. What's the matter with people, anyhow? Trying to achieve something himself. That's his, why he was made up that way. But something in him made that. But he doesn't take it in the right direction. He's trying to take it by his own achievement. Adam himself tried to make a super religion without an atonement. Adam wanted to make a religion where you could just live any way you wanted to, put on a little fig leaf apron and that's all there was to it. See, Cain tried the same thing. Instead of bringing blood, the atonement. He brought apples, pears, or what the fruits of the land was, trying to make something himself, trying to achieve something. Nimrod tried to build a super tower. 
larger than all the other towers in the world so he could go up where the, God got angry with him. Uh, he'd go up on the tower and the floods would pass under him. Super tower. Nebuchadnezzar built a super city. It had hanging gardens. And it was a great place. It was a pattern of heaven. Right before the throne flowed the river Euphrates. And they find out that that's the way the throne of God, the river of life, by the throne of God, is trying to achieve something. Trying to make it big, great, so he can see, see what I've done. Super. It's just in man. Our own nation, jealous of England, not long ago, built a super ship. Said it couldn't be sunk. But she did sink. A Titanic, a super ship, they said it cannot be sunk. But she went down just the same. And the poet wrote the song, God with a mighty hand shows this world it cannot stand. That's right. France built a super Siegfried line. They thought we'll build this line. Behind it, we can... Have women, money, and wine, and whatever we want. And if Germany ever comes after us, the only thing we'll do, we'll just turn these guns on them and run them back. The Siegfried line. But what happened? They forgot something. Germany marched around behind it. They couldn't turn the guns. They took it. Germany built them a Maginot line. A great Maginot line. Fortified themselves under there, but along come the Americans with the blockbuster and blowed it out. See? Trying to achieve something with themselves. The church has tried to achieve a super denomination. That's right. We've been asked in the papers recently, you've been noticing, why not all the churches emerge in the one and come back to the mother church? Where it begins. In Rome, I want one scholar. I want one historian. And we got one of the best setting right here. I want one scholar, one minister, one historian to ever show me where the church began in Rome. The church began in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. I will believe the Pope if he wants to take it back to that. I'll go with him back there. That's right, but not to Rome. I'll admit this. Rome is the mother place of all organization religion. And the Bible said in the 17th chapter that she was and she had daughters after her. But each one is trying to build a super denomination. It's too bad it gets into ours too. To get members, we proselyte and pull and everything else to get members. Trying to make a super denomination. And then when they get a big denomination, they try to make it super by getting the mayor of the city and the judge and a better dressed and a better educated. You only get an intellectual bunch of cold formal nothing. Right. Just reminds me, it just comes springtime. I watch the birds building their nest. And I think an old mother bird, she can build her nest and get up on it, lay her eggs. But if that old mother bird hasn't been with the male bird, they'll never hatch. Them eggs, no matter how good she treats them, how loyal she is, covers them with her wings, turns them over, does everything she can and sit there till she starves. Them eggs will never hatch if she hasn't been with the male bird because they're not fertile. That's the way with our organization religion. As long as we take in them sinners, just as members of our church, you can baby them and make deacons out of them and them 
married four or five times and smoke and drink and gamble and cheat and lie and put them deacons in the church. You can hover them and do anything you want to until they come in contact with the mate Christ Jesus. They're a bunch of rotten eggs. A whole thing needs to be thrown out of the nest. They'll never hatch. The best thing to do is clean out the nest. Start all over again. Get with the mate Christ Jesus. Then there won't be so much differences. Super denominations. Greatest. We belong to the so-and-so. This denomination. We're the greatest among them. We belong to this. Now they're asking you to emerge it. Bring it all into one. It will. It'll do it. That's what the people want. Something super. Everybody they say, well, I belong to the certain, certain church. It's the biggest one in the world. Biggest denomination. Sure, they like that because it's super. All these things failed. The Titanic sunk. Imagine our line blowed up. Nimrod's tower crumbled over. Babylon went down. And the denominations died. Their history dust. Hallelujah. They've always wanted a sign. God said, I'll give them one. Brother, the, the fork and lightning in the black sky at night shows that there can be light in the time of darkness. God said, I'll give them a sign. Not a polished up tower. Not an ecclesiastical tower. I'll give them a sign, and it'll be an everlasting sign, an eternal sign, one that you won't have to keep building on to. It'll be an everlasting, a super sign. A virgin shall conceive. Oh, my. All their great polished towers and schools and and lines and ships and everything else. But God said, I'm going to give them a sign and it's going to be a super sign, an eternal sign, an everlasting sign. A virgin shall conceive. <laughs> Amen. What is the supernatural? It's a super sign. Not a polished up affair, but a super sign. God manifested in flesh. Little Jehovah. Born in a manger over manure pile. Little Jehovah crying like a baby. Little Jehovah playing in the streets. But it's a super sign. Amen. Amen. Though it be talked about, yet it's God's super sign. An eternal sign. He did not come with the salute of heaven. God let the quarters down and down, the, the banisters come, angelic host to the yard of Caiaphas, and they all played bands, and the angels danced around on the earth. He come by the way of a barn, a stable. But it was a sign. Not everybody saw it. But those who were ordained to see it saw it. God shows His super science to those who are born to see it. Yes. They didn't see it. Thousands lived in the days of Jesus, never heard about Him. Tens of thousands, millions that never know nothing about Him. He didn't come as the way of an angel. When He come down from heaven, He could have come as an angel. He come from heaven. He could have come as an angel. He could have come as a cherubim. But instead of that, he came as a seed of Abraham. A man. God making himself man so he could die. He couldn't die in spirit. He had to become flesh before he could die. But it was a super sign. A great sign. He came to be the seed of Abraham. That he might show a super race. Now Abraham had a seed. Natural seed. 
Then he had a super seed. God's full of super stew, remember. And Abraham had a super seed. And Jesus came that he might redeem the super seed of Abraham's race. God was sure to do it. Race was supernatural signs of a supernatural Christ. After 2,000 years of hard trial, with all their blockbusters and ice gorges and everything else, their freeze-out spells in their denominations has never been able to freeze out, shove out, or destroy God's super sign. He's alive today after 2,000 years. He's God's super sign. You might tear down a tower. You might sink a city. You might sink a ship. But you cannot sink God's eternal super sign. Amen. It's an everlasting sign. Christ's resurrection could not be destroyed. That great super sign that God gave us. We notice in the Old Testament... Abraham's seed, according to Genesis twenty-two sixteen 16, and 17, Abraham's seed was to possess the gates of their enemy. Amen. God promised that on the mountain. When Abraham called his name Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide for himself a sacrifice. Amen. God will grant it. I want to ask you something. Where did that lamb come from? Abraham was three days' journey. Any ordinary walking man can walk oh, 25 miles a day. He was three days' journey from civilization, then up on top of a mountain where wild beasts, no water, nothing to eat, and up on top of the mountain and offered, started to offer up his own son in a commission from God, and when he started to take the boy's life, a ram bladed behind him. Where did that ram come from? Now, it wasn't a vision. He killed it. Blood run out of it. It wasn't a vision. It was a ram. Amen. And Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh. The Lord can provide for himself a sacrifice. A super sign. Supernatural. And all of Abraham's natural seed through Isaac possessed every gate of the enemy they come to. It's exactly right. Praise the Lord. I have a line of them wrote down here. Take us all afternoon to get through. How about let's talk first, just for a moment, about the Hebrew children. When they went into the fiery furnace. Now, they didn't have any assurance, only that they were Abraham's seed. God didn't tell them nothing, and God never told them, now you go down there and go in the fire, and I'll be by you. But they were Abraham's seed, and no, they had the rights. And they said, we're not going to take back God's word. God told us not to bow to idols, and he's able to deliver us. If he doesn't, we're not going to bow to your idol. And they possessed the gate of Babylon's furnace, the gate of fire. They did. Daniel possessed the enemy of the line, the gate. Moses possessed the Red Sea and possessed the enemy in Egypt. Why? Because he was Abraham's seed. Shamgar, a little fellow, one of the judges of Israel, only one verse wrote of him in the Bible. One day he was standing at his barn door. And the Philistines would come in and eat up all their food. They'd work hard all summer and then take their stuff into the garner. And then along come the Philistines and take it away from them. One day he perhaps got all these food gathered up, looked at his little wife standing there and she was thin and little pale-faced children. Looked at the poor little fellows, how they were anemic condition with mallard. Uh, nutrition or something and looked how they looked at him and he said well maybe this winter we can have something to eat maybe I can sell a little wheat and get you a dress 
for the little girl with some shoes for the little boy. Here he heard somebody coming up the road. Here come a thousand Philistines, armored, spears, swords hanging to their side, trained man. Trump, trump, right up the road they come. Little Shamgar stood there. What could he do? He was a farmer. He was a soldier. And he didn't have nothing to fight with. He looked sitting in the corner and there was an ox goad. And you know what that is? And any of you Kentuckians ought to know. When you're plowing a stick that you punch the ox along with. So he, um, there's an ox goad sitting there in the corner. And he looked over that, probably had a little piece of brass on the end of it. Where it knocked the girl off the plow and punched the ox along as they went along. And there that sat in the corner. He stood and looked coming up the road. He didn't have training time to go train how to do, you know, and how to use his, uh, his ox goat or a sword. But he remembered one thing, I believe. That he was a circumcised Israelite. Hallelujah. He was the seed of Abraham. Amen. Amen. He had a right to the promise oh, that he would possess the gate of any enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Both sides, he told Rebekah the same thing and Abraham the same thing. There he was, the seed of that couple. And he had a right to it for where he was circumcised. He was, a, he was an Israelite. He was a seed of Abraham. He had the promise of God that he could possess any gate of any enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit of God come on him. And he took that ox goat and slew that thousand Philistines. Yes. Yes. Why? Because he had a super strength. Samson had a super strength because a super spirit come up on him. That's the reason the jawbone didn't break we was talking about last night. It was a super. That's exactly right. All those were natural seed of Abraham. But... There come a royal seed of Abraham. Now, Abraham received Isaac as one from the dead by his wife through sexual. Now, that was one as good as dead. That was the natural seed. But it was pointing to the super seed to come. The one that wouldn't even have an earthly father. And neither had he an earthly mother. That struck somebody all right, Catholic friend, if you call her the mother of God, I want you to show me one scripture where she was any mother of God. How could God have a mother? Yeah. <laughs> then who was the father? Mary was nothing but an incubator. So, Jesus never one time called her mother. He called her woman. For he was God, and he couldn't call her mother. Right! These dogmas and traditions has, has killed the people. Amen. Called her a woman. One day they said, your mother's waiting for you. Looked up on his disciples and said, who is my mother? Yes. They that do the will of my father. Yes. She's just a woman that God used. Not no mother of God. Mercy, no. That's sacrilegious. To even think of such a thing. Now, this super seed came. Some of them said, well, now, wait a minute. The germ, of course, comes from the male sex. That was God created, but the, uh, the egg in the woman was his body. It was. You think that that would be uh, the woman if it was? Look what you put Jehovah doing. That egg cannot be there without a sensation. There had to be something happen. And look where you put Jehovah mixed up in sex. God created the entire being of Christ in the womb of Mary. And she was just a woman. An incubator. That bare this son. Wasn't nothing of her. Now, she's just a woman that God used. Now, the royal seed came. And the royal seed had to die for all of us. Now, each one of these seeds of Abraham in the natural possessed every one of their gates. How we could go down through and name them by the dozens here. Of how many gates the enemy 
of the, they possess the enemy of the gates. But finally, all those great warriors had to die. But along came the royal seed. Yes. Amen. Yes. When he was here on earth, he possessed the gate of sickness, yes. took it. Yes. He possessed the gate of every enemy come before him and took it. Yes. Hallelujah. And he died. Yes. Yay. And he rose again. Huh. And he possessed the keys to the kingdom of God, to the, the hell of death and the grave. He took everything. He was a super seed. The super promise. Remember, it's an everlasting sign. He arose from the dead. He is not dead. Mexico. A few nights ago here, I was telling about the little woman. That the little Catholic lady that had her baby was raised from the dead. The newspapers interviewed me the next day, and they were saying, Mr. Branham, you are not a, you're just a non-Catholic, aren't you? I said, no, sir, I am a Protestant. He said, you don't protest the church. I said, I do. Not the people, the church, the system. I never, put, uh, God died for the people. That is true. But I don't. I do not condemn the people. It's the system that rules over them. That's the system that I condemn. He said, then you're not an, just a non-Catholic and you are a Protestant. I said, yeah. What denomination you belong to? I said, I'd be as bad off as there ever was. None. I said, I was born into the kingdom of God. Amen. Right. So then he said, watch your, do you believe that our saints could raise the dead too? I said, I my, remember, my background, I'm an Irishman. My background was Catholic. And I said, I know you couldn't be a saint till you were dead, what they said. And he said, well, you cannot be a saint until you're dead. I said, then Paul wasn't a saint when he preached. Peter, James, John, the rest of them wasn't saints until they died. Was canonized by some Roman church. <laughs> well, tell me that. He said, what's your opinion of the Catholic church? I said, I'm sorry you asked me that. And he said, um, I said, do I have to answer you? He said, I'd like to hear you. I said, not no disregard to you, but I think it's the highest form of spiritualism there is. And he said, how do you get that? I said, anything that intercedes with the dead is spiritualism. Well, he said, how do you get that? I said, all these gods and goddesses and everything else that you pray to, they're dead. And he said, why, Mr. Branham, he said, you worship Christ and he died. I said, but he raised again on the third day and is alive now. He is alive forevermore. He is a super sign. Why is it you can't kill him? You can't put him to death. He's raised and alive forevermore. The same yesterday, today, and forever. God give us a super sign. A sign for the word in the last days that he's still alive. He's, a, he's alive, what? Today, to manifest himself to Abraham's super seed. Amen. Remember, the Gentile church is a part of Abraham's supersede because they're dead in Christ and become heirs of salvation through Christ. And Christ is the seed of Abraham. We have the same faith that Abraham had. When God told Abraham anything, no denomination of else could knock it out of him. He called the things which were not as though they were. Amen. And any supersede of Abraham believes the same thing that God's words true regardless of what else takes place. I know that sounds rough, but it is. It's the truth. Yes, sir. Isaac was the natural seed. Certainly. Christ is the super seed. The second seed was Christ, and we are born by Christ, which makes us the super seed with Christ to God. Now, we are the super seed. Not a organization now or denomination. It's a super seed. God always shows his signs, super signs, super things to the people. And he, he's all through the years, he's always showed his signs by his prophets. God always made prophets his sign. I want you to put your listening on now. 
because I haven't got about five more minutes. <clears throat> Notice, God shows His signs, and every time a prophet rises on the scene, it's always a sign. Yes, Amen. Usually a sign of oncoming judgment. When God raises up a prophet. When God raised up Noah, it was a sign that that intellectual age had come to its end. And Noah preached the judgments of God coming and was rejected and laughed at and made fun of. But Noah went into the ark and God condemned those who laughed at him. Amen. Noah was a sign of the oncoming judgment God signed to the earth. Moses was assigned to Egypt. That Egypt was finished. God drowned him in the Red Sea. That was left from the plagues. Jeremiah was assigned to Israel that she's going to Babylon. Daniel was also assigned. John the Baptist was assigned after 400 years with no prophets. John the Baptist was a sign of the coming of the Messiah. John announced him that he would come. And then when what happened, the Jewish race was cut off from the tree of salvation. And John was the announcement of the coming of judgment. God always uses prophets for his signs. Now don't forget that. When you see a prophet coming on the age, and I believe that we're promised one. And I'm looking for it. In Malachi 4, it said, I know you're going to remind me of what Jesus said about, if you can receive it, this is the Elias that was to come. And that forgotten beatitude. In Matthew 11, 6, when disciples of John, after John, like Elijah, a woodsman, lived in the woods, a woman hater, like Elijah, Elijah condemned them women just as hard as he could by the way they were living. And what did John do? The same thing. It's not lawful for you to have her. Yes. Them immoral women. Amen. The nature of that prophet. He loved the woods and stayed in the woods. Come forth fearless. He was against organizations. He said, you generation of vipers who's warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Don't you think we have this to our... For God's able to these stones to rise, children of Abraham. He pulled no punches. Jesus said, why would you go out to see a reed shaking with any wind? Not John. No. Now, when these disciples left, he said, what went with you out to see? He said, if you can receive it, this is you who has spoken of. I send my messenger before my face. That's Malachi 3, not Malachi 4. For if that John at that time, then the scriptures are not fulfilled and was misleading. Because before that great day of the Lord should come, he is to send Elijah, and that great day of the Lord is going to burn up the whole earth, and the righteous will walk out in the millennium upon the ashes of the wicked. That could not have been the John. That could not have been the Elijah. Now I'm notice, so the scripture is strictly uh, interpreted by itself. Notice. And he shall turn, his first coming, the hearts of the fathers to the children. Yes. Taking the old patriarch fathers and turning their faith to this new children's faith of Jesus being coming before him. I'm coming before Jesus, the Messiah's coming. Turning their hearts to this, away from the law, to this. And in his second coming, he will turn the hearts of the children back to the original Pentecostal fathers again. That brings to pass Joel's prophecy saying, I will restore all the years that the father and and so forth is eaten. Amen. In the Garden of Eden there were two trees. One woman and one man. All that lived by that woman die. She's a tree of death. As you're born of a woman, you die. When you're born of a man, Christ Jesus, you live. Notice, then Adam's bride was defiled before he got to her. When Jesus came, he was that tree alive. 
I am the bread of life, the tree of life. Amen. Come from God out of heaven. If a man eats this, he never dies. Yes. Then when he went away, he purchased a bride tree. Amen. And that tree was established and put in the roots of the earth on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Her doctrine and everything happened right then at the beginning. Yeah. Everything that she had need of was given right then. She growed and she growed for about 300 years. And then the locusts and palmer worms began to eat on her until it sucked the life out of her. And we went through about a thousand years of dark ages. What did that locust do? What did the palmer worm? It's the same insect in a different stage. What happened? First, it was a Nicolaitan. Mean Nico means to conquer the laity. Take all the Holy Spirit out of the laity and put it on one man, a bishop, pope, or something. The dignitaries wanted that way. So that he could be the sin bearer for all of them. We got one sin bearer. That's Christ. But that's what the Nico. Lady. Nico means to conquer. Laity is the church. Take all the Holy Spirit. They're not holy, just one holy man. So the idea of getting money into the church on confessions. Somebody said to the lady, you believe in purgatory? I said, yes, sir. I said, not the kind you pay some priest to pray for you. I believe that God purges our souls right now and we go through a time of cleansing and purging out the dross. Certainly, notice now they took all the Holy Spirit out of the church and made a holy man, the solemnity from the church on a holy man, conquered it. That went through for that great denomination of Catholicism. Ruled the earth for hundreds and hundreds of years. There come forth a reformer, Luther. And as soon as Luther died, they organized it and the vine dried up and the husbandman pruned it. Where did it go to? It's dead. Show me where it ever raised after Luther's revival. It died. Along came after that John Wesley, the next stage of the tree, and a great man of God who preached just uh, sanctification. What happened? What happened? As soon as Wesley and, and Asbury and them died, they organized and made a church out of it, and God, the husband, pruned the branches off and it died. Tell me where they ever had another revival. Yes. Then along come Pentecost with the restoration of the gifts. What happened it? The power of God was poured out again, the Holy Ghost. What did they do? Organized it together again. Begin to separate brotherhood. And what happened? God just cut it off. That's right. Oh, but God did say, I will restore, saith the Lord. That seed, where is the life of it? Right in the center of a tree runs the lifeline. Not these branches falling off this way. The life is right in the center of the tree. God promised, no matter how much the suckers come on, like the palm of worms, eating up and sucking up and things like that, but I'm going to restore, saith the Lord. When that tree's coming to a top, just as sure as I'm standing here, when the people of God will unite themselves together, no difference of denomination, and they'll come to the life of God, and there will be a pouring out of the Holy Ghost. That will bring the fruit of the Spirit back into the church again. It will be a super sign. Now, no matter if you're Methodist, that's all right. Baptist, Presbyterian, no matter what church you belong to, that has nothing to do with it. If you're just depending on that, you're going to die. You're going to be pruned off as a dead branch. As the tree's going up, the fruit goes right on top of the tree, remember. That's where the sun hits it. Now... Now the thing of it is when we can bring ourselves to one heart, one accord, one place, one God, one salvation, one Holy Ghost, one blessing. Hallelujah. Then you're going to see the super sign. When people quit mingling with this prescription God wrote, when people quit mingling with the Bible... And come back and believe the word and act upon it and stay there, not for sensations, but until the word itself is quickened and brought to life. And they see the real Bible signs of the last day, the super sign, the same Messiah that once lived. There will come forth a prophet 
one of these days of preaching the original Word of God. Hallelujah. You talk about me telling you about having bobbed hair or something. Wait till you get all to Him. Yeah. Wait till you listen to Him. You think I'm rough on organization. Wait till He comes into existence. Hallelujah. He will restore all the years that the Palmer worm eaten. It'll be a message go forth. Some people say, well, it's an organization. Show me one time God ever dealt anyway but one single person. Yes. Yes. He never even had two prophets at the same time. Right. Always an individual. Man has different ideas. Hope that together they get a mess. God has one man he works with. Amen. There's one Elijah, then Elisha, then a John, on down to Jesus, so forth. Right on down, there's a Luther, a Wesley, so forth, just right on down. Yes. There's got to come, in this last day, a restoration of the church, Amen. that bride tree Amen. that was eat down back kind of a canker worms yes. and palmer worms Amen. and all kinds of insects that eat all the brotherly love and fruits away from it. There's got to come a church again where those barriers will be broken and the Holy Ghost will have the right away among the people. When you do, you'll see the same signs and wonders that happened back there in them days. Amen. Looking for a super sign. Now, that super sign was a virgin born child that was to last forever. An eternal sign. And that child is not dead. He, they killed him. He died, certainly. The stinger of death killed him. But God raised him up again. And here he is after 2,000 years of all the hardships and locusts and palmer worms they eaten on it. There is still a remnant of people that believe God and keep his word. And there will be a bride just as certain as I'm standing in this pulpit. There will be a bride that's washed in the blood of that lamb. And that lamb will be living among them, showing super signs of his resurrection after 2,000 years. The same thing he did when he was here on earth. I believe that. Amen. Praise the Lord. People want super signs. Say, well, I'll tell you, we got a super sign. We added 5,000 people to our organization last year. That's a great sign. That wasn't God's super sign. Communism added a lot more than that. <laughs> By the way, I just might as well say it's on my heart. What you people afraid of communism for? Afraid communism's going to rule the world. You people don't know the Bible. Show me one place where it said communism will rule the world. The Bible said Rome will rule the world. Not communism. Well, communism's just a puppet in the hands of God. Playing it all up to persecute them all together and make his words come to pass. Same thing he said, who can we get to deceive Ahab to send him up there to make Elijah's prophecy come to pass. Communism ain't going to rule the world. You see, Daniel saw that vision. Every one of them kingdoms succeeded one another. Right on down, and never come into communism. It went right out with that strength of Rome in the feet. Right. Romanism's going to rule the world. Not communism. So don't worry about that. That don't bother me a bit. The thing I'm bothered about is getting my people, them precious saints of God out yonder somewhere, to get looking up that way. Amen. Getting your mind off the things of the world. Getting the real experience, that super sign in you, that you pass from death unto life, and all Hallelujah. things become new. Faith Hallelujah. in God. Great signs and wonders Amen. are walking with them. The evening light. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It shall be light in the evening time. Right. A super sign. The sun itself will come out in the evening time. The S-U-N will come out. And the S-O-N comes out. Come out and is appearing in the evening time. What is it? To ripen the evening tree fruits. He said he would restore that tree. Been cut down to a stump. By the all kinds of creeds and dogmas and everything, but I will restore, saith the Lord. Amen. I'm going to restore it, and it'll be a super sign in that tree because God has no other sign. I'm going to give him an everlasting sign. Amen. Now, what kind of works did that sign do when he was here on earth? Yes. Yes. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Look what he did yesterday. That he's got to do the same today. Amen. Because it's an everlasting sign. Amen. Though it spoke of evil, it's still God's sign. Amen. There'll be light in the evening time. We're in that day, friends. We're in the evening time. Don't you forget it. Yes. Satan has just blinded the eyes of people. He's got into the churches and made a mess out of them. Precious, godly people. Yesterday I sat in a cafeteria, or in, a, in a, a nice restaurant up in Los Angeles where some precious people taking me. There were businessmen. There were Episcopalians and so forth sitting there filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. What is it? They've seen the light. As soon as that light flashed across them, they were a seed. Their names were put on the Lamb's Book of Life. Before the foundation of the world, when that light of God swept across them, one man said, I thought they were hypnotizing those people. He's at Phoenix meeting. But said, when I seen that hypnotism can't go down and discern the thoughts of a man. I see that hypnotism can't do these things. I went with them. They're not scholars, he said. They're not educated people. They're humble as they can be. Just open up their heart. He said, that's God and I want it. He started speaking in tongues right there. Hallelujah. It shall be light in the evening time. The super sign will show itself across the evening light. Remember, the same sun that gives light in the evening is the same sun that gives light in the morning. It's not a different kind of light. It's the same light. Do you get it? Yes. Amen. God said, I'm going to give them an eternal sign. It's going to be a sun. And that sun, when he shined on the eastern people, now he's shining on the western people. Now you can't go any further. Sun travels from the east to the west like civilizations travel. We're on the west coast. Amen. We go further, we're back east again. Yes. It's at the end time. The precious Christ, the God of eternity as shining himself upon us, making himself known in us by what? Representing his word to the fullness and to the word. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Super sign. Super sign. We're getting a super sign. We've had denominational signs. We've had creed signs, dogma signs, and so forth. But now we're getting a super sign. The Son of God manifested in us in the person of the Holy Ghost, which is God in you. God working in human flesh. That's Abraham's seed. Notice, at the end, just before Abraham was separated from Lot and Sodom was burned, God came down in a form of a man. And he eat. A minister said to me not long ago, said, Brother Branham, now, you're too sensible for that. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not too sensible. I said, that just shows I got my right mind. He said, do you believe that was God? I said, Abraham called him God. I said, he said, eating that meat and eating that bread and stuff. I said, yes. I said, you just forget how great God is. I believe that was two angels. Now, I see we're only made of 16 elements of the earth. That's you know, calcium, potash, petroleum, cosmic light, and so forth. God just reached down to get a handful of that stuff and go, just step in here, Gabriel. <laughs> We're going down. I made himself one. That's right. Oh, I'm so glad to know him like that. Though they might not even be one speck of me left on earth, but my God who promised to raise me up in the last days can speak. Amen. The cosmic light and things will come to existence. Only my name's on his book. Man, wrote there by the blood of the Lamb. A super sign. Aren't you happy? Don't you? Just love Him with all your heart. He is so good. I love Him with all that is in me. God be manifested. Amen. I believe that He's here. Amen. Amen. Something just happened, man. I've seen something happen. Amen. Hallelujah. He always backs up his word if it's right. A super sign. Watch this. 
right there. There's somebody there from across the sea. Interpret for him. You're from Tamar. You're suffering. You're troubled in your nerves, in your muscles. Let him forget about it. Go back down and do well. Glory. Do you believe it? A super sign. What do you people think? Do you believe? Believe. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Here sits a man here fixing to have an operation. Got a tumor. Mr. Harrison, if you believe with all your heart, you won't have to have it. If you'll take God at his word and believe him, it'll all be over. It's up to you whether you want to believe him or not. A lady from Sacramento is sitting there with an intestinal trouble. If you want to believe with all your heart, God will make you well. You can receive yours. Super sign. Yes. What about you, Mr. Love? Do you believe that God will make you well? All right, stand up on your feet and receive it.
things are possible. Only believe.
years old, come up here, and she'd never been saved, and she gave her life to Christ, went home and died. The family prays out for saved now, all those years. May God bring the same to our brother before he comes out of that room, and he's coming with his crutch laying on the inside. Amen. prayer cards. All right, where did we start from the other night or left off? Was it about 20? What was it? I-20. I-20 is a year. That's where we left off. I-20. 20? 20, 21? 22? 23? 24? 25? And I. All right. Now the ushers are here at the end line. 25, 26, 27, 28, 20. All the I's in the I. Bring that prayer card I, 20 to 100. What's next in J? All right, sir. All right, while they're coming, we're going to pray. Let's see. How do we get through all that? All right. You're ready. Now, uh, J2, all that's got prayer cards, stand up. We're going to do something a little different right now. What we have here. All my prayers are stand up over here. All things are
so that you won't think that divine healing belongs only to the evangelist. These men here have just as much right to pray for the sick as I or Roberts or any person. They're all servants of Christ. And now, if you will just believe, I want to lay hands on every person that comes across the platform. Not only that, but I want my minister brothers to be with me. The help they is going to say, each one So that you'll see that it's the, your congregation can see that just because you're not the evangelist, that I don't mean God's not with you. It's just with you saying there's anybody here. And now, now do you people that's going to come on the prayer line, if you come expecting to be healed, you'll walk off that path and walk off that path. Now, how? I don't misunderstand you. I'm very disturbed. But if you're not, if you get it clear, something's fixing to happen. I, I, I love you. And I, I want to help you, but you're just missing what I'm going to say. How often are you and me ever be able to discern thoughts and people and watch what's happening? Is that right? If that was that would have been done in uh, Sodom, it would have been standing here today. See? Greater, it's even, it's been more happening. Like you're in that line and there is written in the entire line. Hallelujah. And this means. That's right. More has been done in that line of a super sign yeah. of the resurrection of Christ in His presence. Yeah. Showing that it was the same God, the same one, with the same sign, doing the same thing. And He said Himself, I do nothing till the Father shows me first what to do. Is that right? Amen. Now, if he was sitting there right now, wearing this suit, he could not heal you unless you believed him. Now, he could tell you what was your trouble, a lot of things like that, but he couldn't heal you because he's already done it. By his stripes we were healed. Is that right? Already over. It's done now. Every person. Now, listen close. This week, I have tried to get you to see the greater way of doing it. Now, there was a Jew one time that said, Come lay your hands on my daughter and she'll live. That was a Jewish custom, laying on of hands. But the Roman, the Gentile, said, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. Just speak the word. Amen. And when you see his word made manifest, not only with me, but with you. My faith in a gift, your faith in the God that sent the gift. Yes. And see it working between us, that's God. Amen. I just wish I could get that big old group. If I could only get this little group to see that, there'll be another minute of what's happening. Amen. If I just get you to really comprehend what it is. Now let's let you go through the game. Be real reverent now. Look. God. Promise these things to happen in the last day. Yes, Here they are happening. I myself, I'm a ignorant. Don't even have a common school education. Know nothing about these things. The Heavenly Father knows that. So. Yes. But when I was born in the world, when I was just a little boy, I've seen visions and visions in the thousands of them, and every one of them has been perfect. That's right. But what happened just exactly the way it said it would happen. Amen. Yeah. Now, Amen. then you sit there and you claim to be a Christian with faith. Then your own faith goes to the to the throne of God and touches the high priest and he turns back to a gift and answers right yeah. down the show. He just said to God that was, is in me and in you. Hallelujah. It's the same God. Hallelujah. Now, that's have you ever seen a picture of that man? Probably got it. That same angel, that light that you look at on that picture, when I meet you at the judgment bar, remember this is true. It isn't two foot from where I'm walking around right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. You don't believe it starts thinking something evil about it. See, God is still God. He has to be God. He is God. He's always been God. And now look, if that anointing here, 
Now, maybe the brothers don't do that, but these are mi- other ministers. There's nine gifts in sent to the church by God. Is that right? Amen. Apostles, which means missionaries. Apostles, prophets, and seers. And, and teachers, pastors, evangelists. That's all these gifts sitting here together. Now, not only one office, but all of these offices together. With the Holy Spirit, you're manifesting now. These pastors, they've taught you the way to live. You follow their instructions and receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. You receive their, the Holy Ghost and receive salvation by following exactly what those teachers told you to do. Now, I come and told you to grieve on the Lord Jesus Christ. You speak back and hear this to another gift. Now you're passing under the hand of every one of them. Yes. Can you fail? It can't fail. When you walk across this platform and a first man lays his hand on you, say, Thank you, God, for healing. Walk there and rejoice. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, let's bow our heads, everybody. Lord, at the close of this five-day meeting, I realize here today the sincerity of the people. And I realize that the hustle and bustle and the strain, Satan would throw that confusion among them to keep them from having faith. But we're asking you, Lord, to hold him back. Let the Spirit of Christ raid him out of here. And let the people, as they pass over the platform, remember, they're following just exactly what the Scripture said do. These signs shall follow them that believe. Surely, with five straight services, confirmation of your presence, by speaking with tongues, by interpretation of tongues, by healing the people, bring them out of wheelchairs and around over the place and diseases and, and things has been spoken and told the people. And then seeing the power of God save them, seeing all these things happen, surely they believe. Make knowing the hearts, the secret even in the heart, and the people that they're praying for, their loved ones, and so forth. Surely they can see it's the lovely Lord Jesus. Now, let him come in his power, in his force. I bless my brethren here. Lord, just go to stand with me. These pastors and teachers, that's help me. That stood here by me. God bless them. May their hands and body be charged with the Holy Ghost. And as these people sick, like at somebody's children, somebody's mother, somebody's dad, somebody's husband, somebody's wife. It could be mine. Oh, God. But the deepest of sincerity, let those people understand that they are already healed. They only have to accept it. Granted, by His stripes we were healed. And may each one be healed that passes through this line this afternoon as we lay hands upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask my brother here. It's time for action now. The Holy Spirit showed Himself present. The Word has confirmed itself. Now it's your time to act. This is your time. How many believes? All right, as you trail through this line this afternoon, come through believing, go back to your seat, giving God praise. No matter what's wrong with you, leave anyhow. If any cripple, I think there's somebody here to push a wheelchair. Let them push them right up along here. We'll come down there and pray for them. They don't have to bring them on the platform. We'll come down there. You don't have to lift them up or anything. Just bring them right along here and we'll come down and pray for them. Now, how many in this building that's well that's going to join our witnesses in prayer? I'll turn around and say, we're looking for you. Look up on this platform. The presence of the Holy Ghost. A super sign. This sign is going to be done on the church in the day of the Apostles. There's a historian standing here. Never been done since the day of the Apostles. Why? This is the evening line. Sodom is all around. It's to the
the called out church. Now, this is the thing that God wants you to do. Pass through here, and as soon as you come through, come with your face set on God and say, I believe it right now, Lord, and I accept it. All right. Now, I want all the people in the audience also to pray with us now. As we bow our heads, as the people come through, let's lay this off here so no one will step on it. One of you here will take this brother Pops, maybe if you Hallelujah. Oh, something's got to happen then. How many believes it is? I do. Now, let us all bow our heads now reverently and while we pray. And let the audience start coming through now. Our Heavenly Father, this woman is breaking forward now in this great prayer line for this afternoon. She's coming through first. Hand after hand will be laid on her and others as they pass. While prayers are going up everywhere. Now, Lord, this, I don't believe you could do any more than what you've already done. You've showed your presence. You've confirmed your word. You've done all these great things. And now, Lord God, let it be so that each one will be healed as they pass through. In the name of Jesus Christ, grant it. Keep praying, everybody. Keep praying.